Welcome to the Craft Cocktail. Series one of the Craft Cocktail is gonna cover easy vodka recipes. Before we get into the easy vodka recipes, however, I wanna just give, lay down some, just some basic 10 fun facts about vodka. Or at least they could be facts. Some of them might be rumors that really help define the category. So first, vodka. Vodka comes from the meaning vada, which was water. So vodka ends up translating to little water. There is a little water in here. It's 40% alcohol by volume, so the rest of it's going to be water. And in a lot of cases, water is what really uh, defines the flavor profile if you look at a flavor profile at all in a neutral grain spirit like vodka. Otherwise, it's just ethanol and whatever the base wheats, fruits, grains happen to be. It was also said it was produced in Russia in the 9th century, although the first distillery is said to have been documented in 1174. Also, the day, October 4th. October 4th is National Vodka Day. You can find a national day for anything, so I think that was probably something put out by the marketing teams of spirits and brands and stuff like that. If you're into vodka, check off October 4th as the day that you need to, if you need an excuse to be able to make a vodka cocktail, come back to the Craft Cocktails and check out Series 1's playlist as it builds so that you can see all the different vodka cocktails that you can choose from. The date. The date is important on your vodka. Believe it or not, alcohol does weaken and lose a lot of its uh, beauty and luster over time. Vodka is no exception to this. So if you have a bottle of vodka that's, say, 50% gone, that oxygen is actually kind of tainting it and softening the product. Uh, you'll also have evaporation, especially if you either leave off the top like that by mistake, or if you're using a quick pour, fast pour, and you leave it in there, the alcohol is actually evaporating through any gap it can get. And that means that this is actually, this 40 proof product over time is probably not 40 proof anymore. It's gonna get weaker. So drink your vodka within a year. Next, the claim. The claim is a Poland. Poland actually has claimed to produce vodka in eighth century. Although it was distilled from wine, so there is probably a better chance it would be what we define as brandy, but probably not as good. Others say vodka was produced in Russia in the ninth century. If you go by that, if you don't count Poland as making vodka, that would put Russia at the ninth century, which could make them first. However, then there are historians that say that that Russians brought vodka from Italy in the 15th century. So there's some conflicting dates there. Next, it's said that vodka was originally produced as a medicine and as an ingredient for gunpowder. Apparently, the Polish scented their vodka to use as aftershave. That's innovative. Historians say that vodka really spread through Europe in the 19th century, assisted by Russian soldiers in the Napoleonic Wars. This is actually something that has happened with a lot of different brands. I know Tabasco is used by the US military. I'm sure that kicked up the knowledge. I know gin was brought back from different adventures in wartime scenarios from different countries into England, which then created their own gin that used juniper. Prior to that, it didn't. However, the end result is because of that widespread need and adoption of vodka, it also decreased the quality. They needed to get vodka into the hands of a lot more people very quickly before there was enough real distilleries to be able to handle that amount of volume. That is supposedly a time that a very large quantity of potatoes being available were used to help create vodka, which also spreads the knowledge that vodka is a potato base, even though a lot of Russian vodkas are wheat. But vodka can be distilled from a lot of different starches, from sorghum, corn, wheat, rye. Those are the ones that kind of dominate today. A corn base, you could look at Tito's vodka. For wheat, you could look at anything from Effin, Absolute. A lot of brands use wheat. Number seven, column and pot stills, which are used today. Pot stills being the earlier version, and column being something you see used a lot more, especially in a vodka sense. Back in the day, filtration was said to be done through river sand until the 18th century when it was discovered that charcoal is a, is a superior filter for vodka and, and really a lot of different minerals. If you have a fish tank, you kind of know what I'm talking about. And to note on that, pot stills are used to make batches of product where column stills can create continuous product. So you can get a lot faster and usually a cheaper price because time isn't as big of an issue when you're working on a column still. But pot stills give you a little bit more nuanced flavor. Number eight, in the United States, vodka was a novelty until around the 1950s. Then it shot up in popularity thanks to the Moscow Mule, Bloody Mary, the Kangaroo Cocktail, which most commoners today would call the vodka martini. Also, 
a vodka cocktail designed in the 1940s or before would have been a gin-based cocktail, at least here in the United States. Then in the 40s, and definitely in the 50s, as vodka trends began to grow, some of those original gin-based cocktails were substituted with vodka because it was the thing that everybody was doing. If you look back at some of the early cocktails like a Breeze, a Sea Breeze, Bay Breeze, um, Greyhounds, those cocktails would have easily be done with gin prior to the trendiness of vodka. Then there were those recipes designed to help launch other products into the market. Great example, the Moscow Mule. The owner of Smirnoff was having a hard time figuring out how to sell the Smirnoff product. At the same time, a lady who had a whole pile of copper mugs couldn't figure out how to build a market with them. And then there was a bar who had a hard time selling ginger beer and wanted to help blow up that market. Moscow Mule is invented, intentionally able to launch all three of those into higher sales demand. And of course, the Ocean Spray Cranberry Company, who wanted to be able to get cranberry to be consumed more by adults than just by children, one solution was to invent a cocktail, originally I believe called the Harpoon, which we now know as the Cape Cotter, used to drive the sales of cranberry juice because vodka's trends were so high that if you took a trendy spirit that adults loved, bring it together with a product that typically was consumed by children, boom, you have a new market. So if you're looking for some simple vodka cocktails, what I suggest you do is you go to homecocktailmenu.com, get our new Craft Cocktail Series 1 Easy Vodka Cocktail Recipe eBook. Once you've downloaded that eBook and you've started exploring some of those recipes, you'll be able to taste along as we launch week by week through Series 1 of our 15 Easy Vodka Cocktails. Taste along with us. You'll be using the exact same recipes we're going to be using to create those cocktails. Check your tasting notes against our tasting notes and build your flavor palette with some easy vodka cocktails. Plus, you're only going to need a vodka, a citrus vodka, and a peach schnapps to build all 15 recipes and follow along and create the first 15 recipes you're going to see on this channel. So what I'm going to need you to do right now is subscribe here, watch a couple of our bar tool episodes, and get yourself prepared. Once you've purchased that ebook, you'll be ready to go for Series 1, Easy Vodka Cocktails. Now go get yourself a bottle of vodka and start experimenting.